Hello and welcome to Noob Tutorials once again. This is Tweak, as you can tell by my naked avatar. And I'm going to show you how I built my automatic melon farm. Well, about as automatic as it gets, anyway. Which is behind me. Oh, uh, well, half of it is. So, I, have, I am in creative mode so I can show it to you easy. As you can see, I have pumpkins on one side, melons on the other, and there isn't really a way to force which direction the, the melon will actually be, so sometimes you end up with it nicely spaced out, one, two, three, four, and sometimes you have it like this, where they double up because they're crappy. As you can see, my wiring, and then another row, and then wiring, and then another row, and then wiring, and then another row. That's just how deep I decided to go. You can actually do this several tiers, and as deep, and as high as you'd like. Anyway, I'll come down here, press this here lever, and you can see the pistons pushed everything out into this here water. And now since all of my melon plants have been harvested. I will check the chests. Oh, see, there you go. I have successfully harvested all of my melons. <laughs> melons. Anyway, and then you press this here lever once again. The pistons push back, and now there is space for them to regrow. Sometimes this happens where you end up with one or two that don't quite get pushed the proper direction. That's okay in the long run because as quick as this is and as thorough as it is, it's okay to miss one or two. It's not actually as bad as it sounds unless you're obsessive compulsive like me and then you have to go through and pick up all the little bits. So anyway, I will show how this works. To start, underneath all of these I have hoppers and because of my snow biome I have glowstone every two so to separate the chests, that keeps the water from freezing and turning into ice, and that keeps this whole thing working. If it freezes, then it, of course, won't work properly. Back here, you can see my redstone circuit. I have repeaters right behind the pistons. That way, the, they work as amplifiers. They keep the redstone signal from fading, and that also results in being able to have multiple redstone circuits right next to each other without them interfering with one another. And you can see my redstone circuit, it comes down here, and this is where they all connect to that one lever which is right there, so you can see the whole line of them. And it's the same thing in all spaces. So there are my plants, there are my pistons, and there's that same repeater redstone circuit. Same thing in each one, and that keeps it from getting confusing, and it also keeps the circuit very simple, so if something stops working, you can find out immediately what's wrong. So now that you can see how it works, for the most part, of course there are hoppers down here as well, same setup, just in tiers, um, I will build a very, very small replica of it, so that way you can see how it is built. Okay, now we're in a spot with all of our materials that we will need. There are several, so I will try to go through what we need for basics right now. Obviously, you will need a chest, which I will set up just like so. You will need hoppers, as many as you think you'll need. It really does depend on the size of the structure, but for this small one, um, we won't need very many. Your aesthetic block, the block that you use to kind of make it pretty, so obviously I use several kinds of blocks, glowstone and the moss blocks. I just have a regular moss block instead of a dungeon moss block. Dirt for your crops to grow on. A redstone repeater in order to magnify the signal so it doesn't get lost in translation. Regular redstone. A lever. A piston, or several depending on the size water, and if you're in an ice biome, you will also need glowstone or many, many, many torches to keep the water from freezing, because the water is actually very, very, very important. So, place your chest, cycle, circle behind it, and place your hoppers. Make sure that 
they are placed in such a way that all of the bottom tubes are not down into the ground like that. You don't want them like that. You want them facing into the chest because otherwise this will not work and you'll be confused as to why nothing is depositing into that chest. So make certain that that's the way it's set up. I'll play several just to kind of get an idea. It won't be long, uh, wide, but it'll be long. <sighs> okay, now place your aesthetic blocks to kind of hide the design, make sure it looks pretty, all that mess, right over the top of those first two hoppers that are uh, pressing up against the chest. That way people can't really see it and you can still access the chest because if you put blocks right here, the chest won't open. <clears throat> and you need to oops, encase these hoppers in this aesthetic block because if you don't, the water will go everywhere. It won't stay where it needs to stay and that is very much a problem because you want the water to be where it needs to be, otherwise you end up with all sorts of issues. Okay, I will get some glowstone so the water doesn't freeze. And then place some dirt. Actually, let's see. With this one, because it's so narrow, if I were to place a water source here and a water source here, I'll just demonstrate. If I place one there and I place one there, you end up with a steady, just an infinite pool. That's a problem because you want the water to keep flowing, otherwise you'll end up with crop that just stagnates. It doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't move, it just sits there. So what you actually want to do, if yours is only too wide, you want to clear that, and then you'll want to go back to, so that way you have this buffer right here, And then you place one water source there and one water source there. And then you see the steady stream that is created by doing that. That will continue to make sure that the crops don't just stagnate and sit on top. They'll actually flow down into the hoppers and the hoppers will then deposit them into the chest. If you're unsure if it works, throw in something, see if it ends up. There it is. So that's a good way to test it before going all haywire on this. All right, next you want to build your tiers. There's one tier. Continue with the glowstone or the torches, whichever method suits you best. And then you'll want to do the same thing right here. So there you go, there is your setup. Oh crap. Sorry about that, I had to pause because of the backup. Um, and I also changed a few things because I realized what I had done wrong just a second ago. What you want to do is you want to build this L shape. And you want that L shape for each. Looks almost like a big couch. Um, because that way you have your crop growing here, and then you can have your piston wired back behind it, directly behind it. So, anyway, I'm only doing two tiers for this tutorial, so... For the first tier, you want two areas for the hopper. Um, for the second tier, it doesn't really matter. You can just put one. Don't make an infinite pool because then you'll just end up with floaty crops, so don't do that. If it flows in one direction, that's okay because it'll still push the crops into the hoppers and it'll still work. So block this off. because otherwise you'll end up with crops flying that way or this way or up and it just causes issues. And now you want to place your piston and the piston will face whichever direction you are facing. So if I want it to face this way, but if say I tried to place it this direction, it would face up. Or if I tried to place it this direction, it would face the opposite direction. You want the wood to face the direction it's going to push. So place it like so. And now um, I'm going to pause this tutorial for the sake of simplicity so I can plant the crops and then they'll grow. Okay, so I have a pumpkin. The melon isn't quite 
plenty yet, but it'll get there as I build this. So anyway, for this very basic, very compact setup, um, an easy way to wire this is to delete the blocks directly adjacent to the pistons and then place your repeaters right next to the pistons. A good way to test to make sure that that will work is by just, yep, see, there you go. Place a lever, and if the lever activates the redstone, then you know that it worked. That's just a good way to test it to make sure. So this one will work the exact same way. Now, in order to make this work properly, it will need to tear. So if you place redstone there, it'll come down one. And if I place it there, then it connects. But because it's such a long circuit, it will kind of fizzle out. So if you want your lever to, say, be right here, this looks, seems like a good spot to have a lever, then you want to place redstone to connect it. But you'll notice, after I do that, it, it gets kind of weak down here. So if you're worried about it, or if your design is really, really, really long, you'll want to place repeaters about every three. So one, two, three, I want to put another one there. That will amplify the signal, make sure that the redstone continues on and doesn't fizzle out and get weak. And that'll make sure that one lever will trigger the entire farm instead of needing several levers or buttons. Now, as you noticed, there was a pumpkin plant here, but now it's gone. If we check our chest, there it is, right there, hanging out in the chest because the hoppers did what they were supposed to. The water carried it into the hoppers, and that's that. Now, if you want to be more advanced with your design, you can do it like this, where I I expose the circuitry here, but generally all of them look like this. So it's all hidden circuitry. All you see are the plants, and you don't see any of the redstone wiring either once it's all closed up. All you see is this lever. And all you have to do, press the lever, the redstone circuitry activates, the pistons push out, the melons are pushed into the water, into the hoppers, and the hoppers carry the melons and the pumpkins into the chests that you have set up. Release the lever, the pistons go back, and then there's room for your crops to grow again. It's as simple as that, very basic, not as hard as it looks. You can build it as compact as this, or as big, or even bigger than that, and it works. So there you go, an automatic melon and pumpkin farmer, and a collecting thing. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please share it with your friends, so that way they can do it as well. It is a very basic concept, not too hard, really easy to get a handle on. That way you're not the noob of the server, and you and your friends can show off. So anyway, yeah, that that is it. So thank you and watch again for other tutorials.